<laughs> All right. Well, my story comes out of Salon.com this morning, and the headline is Republicans and RFK Jr. have embraced psychedelics. I love the language in this article. It's yeah. so great. When conspiracy theorist Robert F. Kennedy Jr. took to the social media site X last month to threaten the Food and Drug Administration, he included a laundry list of items that he wants to deregulate if elected to a health leadership position under the incoming Trump administration. For the most part, all of the items Kennedy listed, including clean foods, raw milk, and stem cells, seem to fall in line with his campaign to prioritize personal choice and new age or experimental medicines while upending regulatory bodies like the FDA. Go, Kennedy, go. But Kennedy also listed psychedelic drugs, which are banned in most parts of the world, as something under the FDA's aggressive suppression, which may come as a surprise to those who associate psychedelics with flower children of the 1960s and not the far-right libertarian crown that Kennedy has historically drawn. Yeah, those are the people he's always drawn. As one supporter commented on his post, I disagree on the psychedelics, which are horrible, but on everything else, yes. Yet Kennedy is just one of several prominent Republican politicians to recently endorse psychedelics. In 2023, former Texas government Governor Rick Perry, who served as the U.S. Secretary of Energy under the last Trump administration, spoke at the annual Multidisciplinary Association for Psychedelic Studies, MAPS, conference after previously backing a Texas bill that would increase research investigating psilocybin for veterans. Psilocybin is the drug in, quote, magic, unquote, mushrooms, and has been shown to significantly improve depression symptoms for patients in clinical trials, and other studies are investigating its use in other conditions like obsessive compulsive disorder, post-traumatic stress disorder, and substance use. Some of you are out there thinking, what in the hell is that dude doing on this stage, Perry said at the conference. Yet, that same summer, Perry said federal psychedelics legalization was actually more supported by Republicans than Democrats. Now that Republicans control the Senate and Congress, and President-elect Donald Trump nominated Kennedy to lead the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, some are hopeful that the GOP can exercise its governing of power to revive a psychedelic movement that has shown signs of losing steam. Yet others warn that right-wing leadership could fast-track psychedelics and prioritize the business side of the industry, dun, 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 without ensuring equal priority to the integration part of of the psychedelic experience that comes with additional mental health and societal supports. The Trump administration has signaled that it is going to be as radical as possible, said Brett Brian Pace, a psychedelics researcher at Ohio State University. They see themselves as coming in and cleaning house and implementing change through executive directives, and I don't think that makes for careful medicine. Although it remains illegal on the federal level, psilocybin was legalized in Oregon and Colorado through ballot measures in recent years, and treatment centers are now being rolled out in these states. Many other cities have decriminalized psychedelics, citing their low risk for harm, especially compared to drugs like fentanyl and methamphetamine. With this momentum, many were hopeful that Lycos Therapeutics, formerly known as MAPS, would get FDA approval this summer when they submitted a new drug application for MDMA to pre treat PTSD. MDMA, sometimes called ecstasy, has been shown to significantly improve PTSD symptoms in clinical trials. However, the industry experienced serious setbacks after the FDA rejected MDMA therapy in August citing concerns over the quality of the data submitted with the new drug application. Earlier this year, study participants came out to say that they'd felt pressured to report positive results. That sucks. And at least one patient came forward with sexual misconduct allegations. That extra sucks. Ultimately, 
Some of the studies submitted in that new drug application were retracted by the journal that published them. Juliana Mercer, the Director of Veteran Advocacy and Public Policy at Healing Breakthrough, which advocates for MDMA-assisted therapy for veterans, said the FDA's MDMA decision came as a gut punch to those working to increase the availability of psychedelics and that long-standing stigma against controlled substances like MDMA are a barrier to getting them approved. In Massachusetts, a ballot measure to legalize psilocybin was also rejected this past election. I think there's still absolutely stigma attached to it, Mercer told Salon in a phone interview. There's still more work to be done in terms of correcting the information that was given to us through programs like the Just Say No campaign and the War on Drugs. That's an understatement. Although Kennedy will need to be confirmed by the Senate to secure a leadership role at the HHS, some believe his influence could lead to deregulation that could make psychedelics more widely available. With plans to bust the corrupt alliance between major pharmaceutical companies and the agencies that regulate them, while supporting transformative treatments such as psychedelic-assisted therapies, we expect RFK to usher in a new era of U.S. healthcare. Joe Calabi, the CEO of Healing Realty Trust, which is the psychedelic and cannabis industry, wrote in a statement. Jenny, you're on. Oh, that's not me. That's Adam. Or somebody's on. Adam, your girlfriend. Oh. Yet others emphasize that those regulatory frameworks are in place for safety reasons and that psychedelics need to be subject in this kind of scientific scrutiny. Some, including Dr. Nora Volkow, who helms the National Institute of Drug Abuse, have warned that the type of the hype around psychedelics has outpaced the science. You have people saying psychedelics are going to cure the mental health crisis, and those are big statements, Pace told Salon in a phone interview. Those are the kind of statements that certainly attract investors, and they certainly get donations to get a research study done. In addition to support from Republican conservatives in California, Texas, and Michigan, psychedelics have also garnered advocacy among Silicon Valley Republicans. Elon Musk, who Trump appointed to lead the new Department of Government Efficiency Agency, has said that he has a prescription for ketamine, a psychedelic-like anesthetic, and has discussed using other psychedelics. Earlier this month, psychedelic investor Christian Angermeyer said on X that many attendees at a psychedelics event in San Francisco were pro-Trump, some of them very openly, which would have been impossible a year ago. And Rebecca Mercer, who has been called one of the chief financiers through the, of the fascist movement, donated $1 million to MAPS through the Mercer Family Foundation to fund psychedelic research for veterans. Although some have argued that psychedelics can turn people into progressives, change ideology, or fight fascism, these substances have a long history of use by people across party lines and tend to amplify existing ideologies rather than change them, Pace said. As psychedelics have hit the mainstream, it follows that they are being embraced by mainstream political parties in the U.S., he added. For those who think that psychedelics are going to revolutionize mental health, solve the mental health crisis, or introduce kinder, gentler capitalism, it's much more likely that the reverse is going to happen, Pace said. Psychedelics will be assimilated by the mental health system, for or for example, they will be applied through a conservative Christian lens rather than distorting it. Psychedelics have been described as having the power to deconstruct the mind from which changes can be made in the process of integration that can sig significantly improve mental health. In Western culture, the reconstruction part of the process could be deprioritized in an attempt to find a quick fix to the mental health crisis. When the stakes are high, go slow, but in Silicon Valley, it's move fast and break things, Pace said. But in this case, we're talking about people, not things. Psychedelics may be another tool for tackling the mental health crisis, but they will be the most effective for communities that have social support in place to help them integrate the experience. I could not agree with that more, Pace said. It also seems counterintuitive for Republican leaders to try and solve the mental health crisis, which is known to be amplified by health disparities, discrimination, and social determinants of health like 
economic inequality when many of those same leaders back legislation that puts more people at risk for these situations on the front end, he added. There's this idea that if you have a mental health problem, you take a pill, and then you have this individual solution for a problem that affects a lot of people, Pace said. There is a, this systemic side of how to address things like reducing the rates of PTSD by making sure that we have robust conversations about sexual assault prevention with men and boys and all kinds of things that are beyond the individual. But this can be a selling point for people. Now we have this treatment. You just pull yourself up by the bootstraps and get back in the saddle. And that's how that article ends. I think it is an interesting point that uh, in our culture, we like convenience, we like things that are pills that just fix things really quick. We just want someone to co come over and fix our plumbing or fix our dishwasher. We don't want to learn or do any of the integration work or figure out how to build something ourselves or any of that hard work. We steer away from it, and I think that is true with psychedelics. A lot of people just want to take a bunch of acid or take a bunch of psilocybin or take a bunch of MDMA and be cured, and that's just not how it works. It is literally the integration, the set and setting. It's all the work that you do after the revelations that psychedelics can bring. So this is Jesse Barney on I at Nine. Happy to be here. I'm really excited to hear you guys talk about this. This is super, super, super interesting, Jesse. And I agree with you. A lot of people don't want to do the work. They want to have the revelation and da 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 da, da but don't want to do the work afterwards to, to to really implement a lot of those changes in their life. They're just like, oh, yeah, this this happened, and I'm going to do this and that. And then all of a sudden, it's like they all of a sudden they forget it all happened, and they just go back to and revert back to their traditional normal ways and habits. And it's, and, and it's and it's true because old habits die hard. So, you know, m maybe they need to take a larger dose. Yeah, like SA, because that is a to me, that's a glaring fucking failure for that study. Like the fact that we have a doctor or someone who's interested in administering this type of drugs and understanding the situation they're putting people in and the risk they're putting people in that will take take advantage of someone in that shape is like just a monumental failure to mm -hmm. me. Um, so that, that really sucks. Like, I, I don't know, but, um, I guess we'll see. Maps is really kind of needing a win here. Mm, Maps yes. needs a win. What do you, y Yaro, is, is your, is your mic working? You, you, are you back? I am back. Okay. It's look not, at that. Look at that. You guys, we I got Yaro. I was being silenced by the digital Illuminati, AKA mm -hmm. the app we use. And, uh, fifth restart is a, is a, is, is, was the. Fix. May, may, look, maybe you were having a psychedelic experience and you had to hit restart, like Jesse's story. No, I was tripping. Mm -hmm. um, I, you know, I, I think it's challenging for me because I like, I'm bullish on this nascent niche mm -hmm. uh, psychedelic treatments. Uh, we we for many for a long time had a you know an evelid evangelical pundit here on High at Nine News who talked about the promising future. And the, the the chances that it could be a change agent for for society uh, more broadly, which gives me great pause to see somebody like Wormhole Kennedy affiliated with something that I think doesn't need any negative affiliations. I, I have a dim view of Kennedy in general, and think that anybody who's willing to sell themselves to both the <laughs> Harris. Uh, presidency as well as the Trump presidency shows that they're more concerned about their position than they are about what they're passionate about uh, because he, he went to both before anybody won and said, who's got a job for me and how can I endorse you if you that's, that's not That's not really me? how that worked, but that's Yeah, cute. that is exactly mm, how that worked. Not and, buying and that. We can cover that on another show. You can buy mm -hmm. it or not, but it's out there, and I invite our viewers to Google that because that's exactly what he did. He went to both of them and said, who will give me a job? And it was widely reported, Jason, mm -hmm. uh, in many uh, uh, media channels. So my concern is I think that Kennedy coming in isn't going to do this uh, conversation a service. And I think that because he's been so polarizing and said some stuff that's just bass backwards and frankly, scientifically inaccurate, my worry is that he could set this conversation back, not forward. The other thing that I think is, I think the Trump administration in its choice of cabinet members or 
uh, strategic positions is doing a really, really good job of positioning itself as sort of maverick and shake things up and things aren't gonna be business as usual. And I really appreciate that. A good example of that is all of the drumbeat around tariffs and things like mm -hmm. that, which I think at the end of the day, he's probably not gonna do. And what he's really trying to do is prove that he's erratic and get other countries to come to the bargaining table. And that strategy may work and it may actually be a benefit for this country, I don't know. But the idea that that Kennedy uh, could be a helpful influence uh, changing uh, our for-profit medical paradigm is a challenge for me because I think that his most inspiring record is really around environmental pollution. <laughs> and uh, when I hear him speak, I think that his brain is environmentally polluted because he seems like oh he's still a few marbles short oh, of a man. full box. Man, oh man, oh man. Well, I, I, I think, I think uh, Kennedy is the right is the right man for the job. I mean, he's he he is willing to uh, to 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 fight for these things, and 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 really um, promoting these things on the national stage. So so I'm I'm wishing him uh, all the best on this, and and hope that ultimately he is successful with this venture because you know um, I'm, I definitely am against uh, pharmaceutical drugs and single compounds and whatnot. I'm, I'm all about the plant medicine I don't, in, in I don't that respect. I think he's going to move the needle. I don't think he's. I, I think, think he this will. Is all just talking points. I don't think he's going to do anything in respects to plant medicine, whether it's cannabis or psychedelics. I think at the end of the day, this is all going to be for the headlines, and it's going to be unfortunately most likely business as usual. My concern for You're somebody just a who's naysayer. Running, uh, uh, or maybe you could call me a skeptic, but but I maybe I'm just a realist. I oh, think you're at a the hater. end of the day, what. Hey, okay, sure. <laughs> what I hate is people whose actions and rhetoric don't align. And my biggest concern is that we, we miss this opportunity to take that 20% of the gross domestic product that that that, uh, that was part of healthcare and really strip away this notion that medicine needed to be for profit. Mm -hmm. We don't have cradle to grave healthcare. One out of X number of Americans go bankrupt by getting cancer. And there's this massive issue that needs to be fixed here in this country. I don't think a boy who grew up in the Kennedy elite, who lived in the most well-to-do family and who went to all of these very highfalutin Ivy League colleges, understands the demands and challenges of the common man and woman in this country. And I think if they were going to solve anything, first and foremost, it wouldn't be the shiny object of psychedelic medi medicine and the promise it, it might hold, but they would solve the burdensome cost of health care on the average W-2 worker. And I don't see him taking care of that. And to me, that's a more foundational issue in this country. Well, you can be a naysayer all you want because the proof is going to be in the pudding. And when when Doge kicks in, Kennedy is going to be able to kick in even harder with all <laughs> this stuff. Pudding, okay? The only pudding is his brain. <laughs> Stop it. Stop the ridiculousness, Yaro. Man, man. You, you know, guys... I, I think there's one massive oversight in everything you're saying, Yaro, and that is that this conversation on the national level and in the cultural level wouldn't be nearly where it was is right now without Kennedy mm -hmm. and we're, we're talking about the health crisis across the board in a light that I've been begging this nation to talk about and to address for since I was a teenager I've been into this stuff so these topics that are coming into the national zeitgeist in people's minds I've been trying to get this to happen literally almost my whole life so so in that sense, the, you can say whatever you want about mm -hmm. him personally and all these other things, but the truth is is that he has brought these topics to the forefront in a way that has not happened during my lifetime, and it's one of the most exciting things ever. And psychedelics is just one small part of it. So mm -hmm. I think in, in going to the political part, you're missing the fact that without him, this conversation wouldn't be happening at all. In essence, he has gone into the light, Carol Ann. No, listen, I think you make a really good point. If he amplifies a topic, and if that ultimately uh, increases the chance of change, then it's a net benefit. And you and I will just have to take a pinky swear gentleman's bet that in eight, uh, six, nine, 18 months from now, we will reconvene and see whether all of that- I, I will go further needle. than that. I will go Look further than that. Look at this. I will be the first person if there is not serious 
radical movement and change in these areas that him and the administration that he's joined are promising, I will be the first person to say they are all now the biggest liars of all time and that they duped literally 70 percent of the American people. And it was really brilliant. Uh, if, but if, if it does happen, I'm looking for the other two from the other side. I'm looking for people to say, wow, things happened. We weren't right. If they do accomplish things, if psychedelics do have this amazing renaissance that comes on the coat heels of really this entire health conversation, if there's really change there, I really hope that all the people who are naysayers stop just being naysayers and actually mm -hmm. see what's happening that part yeah you're gonna have to say sorry yarrow exactly you're gonna have to eat your words yarrow you're gonna have to be like sunny on the view i'm willing to I, I, i'm definitely I'd be happy to. i'd be happy to eat my words because i'd rather be wrong and see more positive benefit to all americans than be right and come back and tell jesse i told you so mm -hmm. so at the end of the day i'm definitely for change i don't think this is the best ambassador and i think they're playing to the headlines and I hope I'm wrong. You're wrong. Because if I'm wrong, you are. everybody wins. But if I'm right, right th this is not the first time where this Kennedy has come in and duped a lot of people into thinking he's the next version of hope and change, only to really be worm brain. Well, Yaro, if you're right, then it's just politics as usual. They're just all liars and it's exactly. all bullshit anyways. Oh, exactly. Look at this. Nothing new. Status, nothing status, normally status. terrible or yeah <laughs> status quo well let, let me tell you something i have i have some good news because we're, we're approaching the holiday season you guys and there's lots of